From the station that made country music famous, 650 AM WSM, this is a Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Hi, it's Charlie Manos, and in this episode, we sit down with Kaylee Shore. Kaylee joined us on our studio hotline April the 7th of 2020. We would talk a little bit about Open Book, her terrific new album that was released late in 2019. But the pressing matter was how she was feeling. Kaylee had recently been diagnosed positive for COVID-19. She was featured in People Magazine and a lot of publications around the country. She joined us to talk about it on Coffee, Country, and Cody. Music of Kaylee Shore from Open Book. I know 56-year-old Portuguese man is not your target demo for the record, but I got to tell you, you know I love, love, love this record. It is so good. Kaylee Shore, good morning. <laughs> that might be my favorite lead-in I've ever gotten. Uh, <laughs> well, so uh, so what's new in your life, huh? It's been a quiet couple of weeks, just kind of uh, chilling. Uh, <laughs> in ways, in ways. Um, yeah, it's been pretty crazy. Uh, I mean, I thought I was going to be spending these past few weeks um, on my first ever headlining tour, and I was supposed to be going to Europe for the first time next week um, for the Songs of Forgets tour, and instead I was um, diagnosed with um, as part of a global pandemic. Mm. So yeah, I you can, never you never know what's happening. I, <laughs> it was I, can, I can remember I, I was just sitting in my chair, scrolling through Twitter, and your tweet popped up, and I'm like, "Whoa!" Did not see that coming, you know? Because I mean, you don't really see it ever come with anybody, but you think, uh, you know, there were those in their 70s and 80s that maybe would be in, at least in the general perception more susceptible, and but somebody so you know vibrant and young and like 25, and it's like it just it just it just threw me. So I'm curious, in your life, had you ever had the flu and maybe what the comparison is if you have? Yeah, it was two completely different things. Okay. Um, I I was actually, I mean, and the thing is, we don't know a whole lot about COVID-19 yet, mm-hmm. still in the grand scheme of things. Um, but I, it was so different than, than any other time I felt sick. And I think it was mostly the body aches, like, you know, flu, you get fever, you get queasy, whatever. Um, but I've only had the flu maybe like three, four times in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was just like, I woke up from a nap just, and I just felt like I'd been hit by a truck. It was just, I was so exhausted. And I would say that was arguably the worst part of it. And then it was weird too, cause it came in waves. So like I would feel relatively fine and then I'd get a fever out of nowhere and like full chills. And then I would, you know, have the body aches and then I'd feel fine again. So I'd just be like, what is it? Make up your mind. You know, it felt like, my, you know, high school ex-boyfriend all over then. Wow. And how many total <laughs> days, <laughs> how many total good. days of symptoms did, I mean, did you have? I had um, probably three days where I, the fever and the body aches were at play with like the really severe symptoms. Then after that, I just lost my sense of taste and smell and kind of had like a lingering headache. Um, but I would say probably about really five days total and then seven days until I felt like I, you know, never had it. Wow. And the crazy thing is you guys were doing exactly what everybody's been told to do, you know, yes. self-isolate, not be in groups, don't go out unless you need to. And then, bam, it still got you. Yeah, I had played a um, benefit for uh, the National Tornado Victims on March 10th. Yep. And that um, the last time I had left the house other than to make a grocery store was March 14th. And I was still being, like, you know, really, like, choosy about what I was doing and, you know, but trying to follow the CDC guidelines. And as, you know, it became increasingly apparent on the 14th, I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock up. Um, and I went to the grocery store, like, two, maybe three times tops. Um, over the next two week period and um, I managed to get it somewhere in the middle of all that. Yeah, I think the insidious thing about this, well number one is that there's no way to, to cure it right yet, but but the fact that from two to 14 days mm-hmm. you could have it, show no symptoms and imagine how many people you can infect when you don't even know you're sick. Never, I mean obviously when you're sick you, you quarantine in, but, but that's the crazy part about this thing and that's how so many people I would think are getting it, right? 
Oh, sure. Absolutely. Um, and I, you know, in retrospect, I was, you know, I played that tornado benefit on the 10th. Let's say that that's the day I maybe was exposed to it. Yeah. Um, cause I could have been, it would have been like kind of a stretch, but could have been. And then that weekend I was supposed to be playing shows in new England, um, for my too much to say tour. And, you know, two of the venues were like, we'd really like to reschedule. And then there was one that was like, we could probably still make it happen. And I was just like, I don't want to do this. I feel like we just need to err on the side of safety. And and I like playing shows for me that one of the best parts is getting to do meet and greet after and like hug and, you know, ten, hundreds of people. And there's no social distancing in a meet and greet. Joe, you know all about that. <laughs> and, um, and I'm a hugger too. So I was like, I'm not going to be able to like do this the way I want to, so I'm just going to reschedule. And if I had gotten it on the 10th, I could have gotten every single one of my fans sick. Oh, yeah. Think of, like, a worse thing. That's, oh, my God. Hmm. <laughs> like, that's so sad. Yeah, it's so crazy. So are you feeling completely back to normal, or is there any lingering symptoms right now? No, there hasn't been any lingering ones. I mean, like, I... I feel like I have a pretty good immune system um, in general, and I've been you know, taking pretty good care of myself lately just because, you know, it's touring season, or was, and, you know, it's it's time to, like, put the wine away, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Well, now, I mean, that's all there is to do. But, you know, I, so I bounced back pretty quickly, and then, um, you know, I've been talking to the Department of Health and um, the doctors at Vanderbilt a lot because they want to monitor everybody really closely and see mm-hmm. if there's been any mm-hmm. sort of mutation or any changes. Or Because I, I still am part of one of the first waves of what yeah. they're calling convalescence. Mm-hmm. So what I'm excited about, though, is... Um, as far as they know right now, because there hasn't been any mutations, I'm now, um, you know, supposed to be immune and also can't um, transmit it to anybody else. I was like just thinking clothes. that and thinking I would invite you over. <laughs> would you like to come hang out with me and my dogs? We're lonely. <laughs> so, no. Well, and some of the doctors I've talked to have been like, you know, like there's there's opportunities like you could go um, buy groceries for elderly people. Yeah. And I'm going to be donating my plasma because they're thinking that's going to be part of what can um, help you know, cure people of it. Wow. Yeah. That's... I feel like Iron Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> and you were busy. You had two live streams last night, I see. I did. I had yeah. two live streams. Those have been really fun. And I'm thankful, um, you know, just for, for music and how so many things have had to stop and that hasn't. I mean, yes, my life looks different right now than I thought it would, but I'm able to do live streams and interact with fans and, um, both of my roommates are songwriters that I met through Song Suffragette, so we were able to sit around the house and write songs, too, and that's really special. So since you can't pass it along, a- any interest in a six-year-old? I, I know one <laughs> who, uh, you know, has a lot of free time on his hands. <laughs> so. Hey, we're, we're going to wrap up, and we'll do it on the other side of the break, but I want you to set this up as we as we say goodbye now. I, I Again, I, I wasn't joking. I, I love the record, Open Book. It was so cool to be yes, there but. when you played some cuts at the Opry and when you came in on CD, CD release day. You came with Dunkin' Donuts. You're such a great artist. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, but Alice in Wonderland is one the first time that I I just fell in love with that song. So th- the backstory on that and who you wrote it with, and w- we'll feature it on the other side. Oh, thank you. So I wrote Alice in Wonderland with my best friend Candy Carpenter, mm-hmm. and you know she's played the Opry as well. And I, I remember there was one really special night where her and I did a duet together at the Opry, and then I got to play this one, and it was um, Opry at the Ryman. And we wrote this on my living room floor over a couple bottles of wine um, at like one in the morning. So to see the journey of a song go from such humble um, tipsy beginnings to something so beautiful and bucket list worthy was incredible. Um, but we wrote the song and it almost started as a joke because I had been dating someone really long term and watched the end of that relationship happen. And it was after six years and I'd had someone who I was friends with for um, a pretty, you know, several, several years. And they it became increasingly apparent that there was something going on between the two of them um, within two weeks after the breakup. Mm-hmm. And I jokingly said to Candy when I was, you know, being a little bit sassy, petty, whatever you want to call it. I was like, hey, Alice, how's Wonderland? And she was like, oh, Kaylee, that's, that's the song. And I was like, no, I'm just like being, you know, joking because it, it's really um, named after someone named Alice. So um, it was like <laughs> the metaphor fell into place. We probably wrote the song in an hour. And I was wow. like, dang. Oh, and then the craziest part after the fact is 
Um, I looked in the last photo that him and I ever took together, mm. and there was a vintage Alice in Wonderland poster in the background. <gasps> no! Oh, yes. You can't script that, right? <laughs> you can't. I know. Oh. So this song feels really special, and um, I'm, I'm really excited to um, hear people playing it. I got to hear it on the radio a couple times this week, and it's been really, really special. Well, and I can do it from my couch. <laughs> I am so glad you're feeling better. Thanks for taking a few minutes with us. And, and you, Sassy, I never would have thought that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to our Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Our program director at WSM Radio is J. Patrick Tittle. Our digital producer is Haley Hall. Marketing and promotions director is Amanda Cannon. And I'm Charlie Matos. If you like what you've heard, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help new people find the show.